Uh, I've told the president uh, that uh, his debt limit increase can only pass the House if it includes spending cuts that are larger than the increase uh, in the debt limit, uh, that there are no tax increases attached to this, and that serious reforms have to be enacted uh, to restrict future spending. And I can't think of uh, uh, anything that would do more to ensure uh, such spending restraints uh, are set in stone than implementing a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. The amendment that uh, we vote on next week, is, frankly, it's just common sense. It says the government can only spend what it takes in and places real limits on the ability of politicians to increase taxes or to increase spending. But this common sense measure can only become a reality uh, if enough of our Democrat colleagues join us uh, in voting for it and sending it to the states. Uh, the American people are still asking the question, where are the jobs? Uh, the Democrats uh, said that the stimulus spending bill that they all voted for uh, would keep unemployment below 8 percent. Unemployment today is at 9.2 percent. And after three years of trillion-dollar deficits uh, and the ongoing threat of tax hikes, job creators continue to be frozen uh, with uncertainty. So we need to stop the Washington spending binge and help create a better environment for long-term job growth. A balanced budget amendment will help us do that. A balanced budget amendment will help ensure uh, that the cuts that we make today are locked in for the future. And a balanced budget amendment will also give private sector job creators real certainty about what the future fiscal picture looks like from here in Washington. I've long been a supporter of the balanced budget amendment, and I hope the President and Democrat leaders will join us in making sure that we can pass this and send it to the states. Central to the discussions that we've been having on the debt ceiling increase uh, is how are we going to in ensure that we're actually changing the system in Washington, that we're actually going to change the way that we spend taxpayer dollars? Uh, we are also very concerned about making sure we can go home to the people that, represent, that we represent and tell them that it has changed, that we are going to stop spending money we don't have, and we're going to live just like the people of this country uh, live in their homes, in their personal lives, in their businesses. Uh, the Balanced Budget Amendment does just that. It accomplishes what we want, which is to change the system, finally begin to get the fiscal house in order, so as the Speaker said, we can return to what the priority of this country is, is to get the economy growing again and get people back to work. Sixteen years ago, we were faced with the same question. We came one vote shy, and now we're here today having a discussion where before I came, I turned on CNBC, gold's up, Dow's down. Had that one vote been different, we wouldn't be having this press conference. I want you to only imagine, had that one vote been different, what would we be talking about this press conference? It wouldn't be the jobless report that we've seen time and time again. Now is the time to restore the confidence. Now is the time to correct the mistake. And if there's ever a window of opportunity, we welcome everybody to join with us. Now, it's not something the Democrats have not talked about. There's many Democrats that offered balanced budget amendments. Sidney Hoyer even said as of March of last year, he welcomed the Blue Dogs doing a balanced budget amendment as well. And we welcome everybody to join with us. But think for one moment, 16 years ago, we wouldn't be going through this mess had we given this Congress some adult supervision. This is the opportunity to give the confidence back to this country and move us forward that we can get past our discussions today. In his farewell address, President Reagan said that there were two things he wished he would have accomplished, a line item veto and a balanced budget amendment. And as was mentioned, in 1997, the House passed the balanced budget amendment, and it came one vote short in the Senate. And one of the senators who voted for it, Joe Biden. When I was first running for Congress in 2004, I talked about the importance of a balanced budget amendment. After I was elected, I believe I had underestimated 
to what degree it was going to be difficult to change the culture here that was centered on spending, borrowing, and printing money. A balanced budget amendment will force Congress to live within its means, force Congress to start setting priorities. I believe that this is so important in changing the course that we are currently on. It's important to ensuring that we pass on the American dream to the next generation. Our president is currently presiding over the worst economy since the Great Depression. He is presiding over the greatest debt challenge since the dawn of the Republic. These are not ordinary times. These are extraordinary times, and they demand an extraordinary remedy. The president wants us to help pay for his spending binge. Since we started this debate, our message to the president has been simple. Mr. President, if you want our help to pay your bills, it is time to cut up the credit cards. The debate over the balanced budget dates back to the dawn of the Republic. Jefferson lamented that it was not part of our Constitution. But we are on the verge of being the first generation in America's history to leave the next generation with a lower standard of living. Winston Churchill once said that Americans can usually be counted on to do the right thing once they've exhausted every other possibility. It's a humorous line for times that are not humorous. We have spent decades exhausting the other possibilities. The American family has to balance their budget. Companies that are trying to create jobs have to balance their budget. Why would we expect that a great nation could continue on indefinitely without balancing theirs? It is time for a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America. So 16 years ago, we came this close to passing a balanced budget amendment. And now, don't you get the sense that we are approaching a national crescendo? The American people are looking at Washington, D.C., and they are begging for leadership that is clear and forthright and fixes this problem once and for all. We've seen what President Obama is able to do in the past by turning on the high beams and getting members of his party to vote for very controversial pieces of legislation along the lines of the, the controversial health care law. What we need is President Obama to take a leadership role to engage members of his party in the House of Representatives to pass this balanced budget amendment language. Republicans alone can't do it. It's going to take 50-plus Democrats in order to get this done. And we call on President Obama to balance this budget. I'm Congressman Bob Goodlatte from Virginia. I want to thank uh, Speaker Boehner, Leader Cantor, and the rest of our leadership team for moving forward on a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. House Joint Resolution 1, which I introduced on the first day of this Congress, which has very strong support, one of two that I have introduced. This is not my idea. It's not a new idea. In fact, in 1798, nine years after our Constitution went into effect, Thomas Jefferson said, I wish it were possible to obtain a single amendment to our Constitution. I would be willing to depend on that alone for the reduction of the administration of our government. I mean an additional article taking from the federal government the power of borrowing. This is indeed what a balanced budget amendment is all about, as uh, Jeb Henseling said, cutting up the credit cards. The American people understand this. 49 out of 50 states are required to do this. They see it done in their state year after year. They expect us to do it here in Washington. It's time we enshrined it in our Constitution. Hi, Vern Buchanan from Florida. Everybody has a different reason why they run for Congress. My first week here in 07, I filed a constitutional balanced budget amendment. At that time, roughly, in the last 50 years, we've only balanced the budget five times or six times, 45 years. We haven't. Since I've been here, uh, the Democrats had introduced PAYGO. I voted with them because I was hopeful maybe that was a, a possibility. Uh, then we had the debt commission as a possibility. I just don't believe it gets done in this environment. It hasn't for 50 years. And as Bob mentioned, 
49 out of 50 governors have, have to balance the budget. The state of Florida, looking at their revenues, they've lost three to four billion the last three or four years. They've made the tough choices. We are incapable of doing that without a constitutional balanced budget amendment, and I applaud the leadership for their leadership on this issue. Thank you. Mike Hoffman from the state of Colorado. As a, as a former state treasurer uh, who's had to work within a balanced budget amendment, uh, where we've had to make the, the, the difficult decisions and, and had the tough debates, those decisions and those debates that we don't have today here in the Congress of the United States, because we don't have the discipline of the requirement for a balanced budget. And, and I think that the only way to do it is to have it uh, in, the, in our uh, Constitution. The, uh, as it was said before, in 1995, uh, a, a, the constitutional amendment to a balanced budget passed the House with the necessary two-thirds votes and failed in the Senate by, by one vote. As the chairman of the uh, balanced budget amendment caucus in the House, uh, with 70 members dedicated to taking a leadership role on the floor uh, to push this forward, uh, I look forward to this fight. I look forward to this debate. Joe Walsh from Illinois. I am, uh, I am only a freshman, and the, the gentleman and the lady behind me had been, have been advocating this cause for much longer than I have. But as a freshman, I, like most of my colleagues, came here, as Leader Cantor said, to structurally change the way this town does business. And we have an opportunity, a wonderful opportunity right now to do that uh, by not just accepting cuts, but by forcing this town to balance their books every year by structurally amending the Constitution with the balanced budget amendment. And uh, I think it would be wonderful if we all could take advantage of this moment.